Bonjour and welcome to your new LT1 Exchange video. Welcome to this channel where we explore together, we learn and taste the wonderful world of fine and rare wine. Oh, what is this doing here? We're continuing our tour of Italy's most remarkable wine styles and regions after looking into the sparkling wines from Italy, the white wines as well. In previous videos, we're continuing our tour of the Italian boot. We're getting to a region that is very dear to my heart indeed because I spent quite a while over there working as a winemaker and because, well, the wines are just delicious in Tuscany we're talking about today, of course. In our next episode, we'll look at all of the most remarkable traditional historic Tuscan red wine styles. So make sure to stay tuned for this. But today I want to focus on explaining the concept of super Tuscan wines and how it came about, what the wines are and how different from the others they are and who they are as well. Some names, please, as we'll cover a few unmissable names that you must have in mind if you want to claim to know a little something about your Italian vino. Let's go! Okay, so a quick lesson on wine history in Tuscany. I'll make it as short and painless as possible, don't worry. I'll fly over the fact that Tuscany is historically this illustrious region, Florence, the Renaissance, the Medici family, Leonardo da Vinci, Dante Alighieri, you know all of that already, right? Well, while all of this was happening and everything that happened in Tuscany, that's always been a rather wealthy and prosperous yet rural area, during all of those times, wine was always there because of course wine is never far from anything in Italy and Tuscany is no exception because it's a great place to make wine and wealthy people just like the farmers in Tuscany like it too. So Tuscany has virtually always made wine and rather good one at that based on the local Sangiovese grape. Every region in Italy as you know has its own signature grape, it's Sangiovese in Tuscany. Chianti in particular, this area right in between the two ever competing major cities in Tuscany, that's Siena and Florence, Chianti is right in the middle. Chianti in particular became very reputable for its Sangiovese based wines. So in short, that was the more ancient history summarized. Fast forward, after World War II, the once flamboyant Tuscany suddenly felt more rural and desolated than prestigious after a very harsh war, at least in the fields and in the vineyards. And it was true of Chianti. The once delicious Chianti wine and in this post-war era of survival and agricultural productivism became a bulk product that was sold in Italian restaurants and pizzerias all around the world, thanks in part to the Italian diaspora that had left the country and settled elsewhere in the US, for example, as we know. This destroyed the reputation of Chianti that globally became synonymous with cheap, ordinary wines. Sold in straw flasks, the Fiasco, that's the name of the bottle with the straw, and indeed, this mediocre pizza wine marketing strategy really was a fiasco. Now, in the 1970s, some producers like Antinori, who wanted to make better wine, introduced the idea of blending foreign grape varieties, Bordeaux grape varieties, to the local Sangiovese. Their problem was that the local Tuscan wine authorities, authorities, administrations, always about them, the people running the appellation of Chianti, who controlled that only wines made from Chianti, respecting the tradition, etc., would be called Chianti. Well, they said that it wasn't Chianti if it contained Cabernet and Merlot. What are those grapes from France? What are they doing here? So they had the producers to drop the name Chianti off their wine labels. Now, you may be thinking at this point that this made those wines from Chianti simply Tuscan wines, not super Tuscan wines. So let's see what this super term is about. Sangiovese is indeed a fantastic grape, but, and believe me, I made Sangiovese wine myself with my own hands back in Tuscany. 
It's quite tricky to make very good wine with Sangio. That's how we nickname it. You need great terroir, low yields, particular conditions, growing conditions to have those soft and enjoyable tannins and not too harsh and acidity. While the French grapes like Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot can actually easily make decent, if not excellent wines anywhere, a good example right here. There's a reason Cabernet and Merlot have been planted all around the world and Sangiovese hasn't. So these producers started blending some Cabernet and Merlot, sometimes a bit of Syrah into their local Sangiovese to boost the body, have denser and softer tannins as well. A thing with Sangiovese that you would have noticed if you tried some affordable, cheap or bad Chianti's, Chianti Classico in particular, Tannins are quite granulous and a little loose as well. They feel like there's some space between each grain of tannins and each grain can feel quite big as well, what I call granulous. And I actually find that with quite a lot of Italian grapes, there's this sort of granulosity and the tannins are a little bit loose. I hope that makes sense. The French grapes, as a contrast, tend to have very small grains, very fine tannins that are very close to each other. At least they do on a broader variety of terroir, hence their ability to make wines that appear fine in texture in many different regions and countries all around the world. The big Sangiovese tannins, those granulous tannins can easily become and feel rather harsh as a contrast. If you've tried a cheap Chianti, you'd probably understand really well what I'm talking about. So Cabernet and Merlot fill the gaps in Sangiovese's tannic structure and often better them really. In essence, this blending of Bordeaux grapes is what makes those wines super in a way. Does that make sense? The high-end Sangioveses can be very fine, but you only get that out of very specific and rare terroir, the best terroirs of Chianti, for example, like in the classical area. Which leads us to my second point of what are super Tuscans. Introducing more and more Cabernet, Merlot or Syrah, sometimes even some Cabernet Franc, don't forget Cabernet Franc in Tuscany, allowed to find places in Tuscany that weren't great for making Sangiovese wine at all, but that are actually fantastic for growing French grapes. Suddenly in Tuscany, when the Super Tuscan movement bloomed in the 70s and 80s, loads of new areas could make great wines while well, they could only make bad Sangiovese before. That was the case on the coast in particular and in the southern part of Tuscany that is called Maremma. They discovered the clay coastal area called Bolgheri, which has become now the home of some of the best and most expensive, finest Italian wines like Ornelaia and Sassicaia. And plenty of famous producers started making excellent wines in the Maremma as well, based on French grapes. The world opened up in Tuscany beyond the historic recognized appellations like Chianti, Brunello, Vino Nobile di Montepulciano, all based on Sangiovese. Because these new wines couldn't use these prestigious appellation names on the labels, they had to invent original names for their wines. That's what they did. So they started giving each cuvee a very distinctive name. Sasikaya, Ornelaya, we'll talk about those, Solaya in a minute. Easy to remember and impactful market names for those super Tuscan wines, one of their characteristics. They started branding each wine more than the property, which was rather new in the world of wine at the time. The authorities also created in the early 1990s an appellation for them as IGT, Toscana wines. That's for Indicazione Geografica Tipica. Understand wines from Tuscany, AVA if you wish, which is how you can identify most super Tuscan wines now. So which are some of these distinctive names everyone knows about when we talk about super Tuscans? Let's cover some of the admissible makers that you need to know. Let's go. And if there's one name that you need to hear and perhaps remember when it comes to Super Tuscans is Tignanello. And not because it's the best or the most expensive, but because it is considered to have been 
the first, created by Antinori in 1971, blending 80% Sangiovese, so we are still Tuscan, 80% Sangiovese with 15% Cabernet Sauvignon and 5% Cabernet Franc. It sells at around $80 to $100 a bottle, so not an ultra premium, but a great, great now classic Super Tuscan. Tignanello. Although there was a Super Tuscan wine before Tignanello and it's called Sassicaia. This is now one of the very most expensive and finest Italian wine whose first vineyards were actually planted in the 1940s right on the Etruscan coast near the village of Bulgari on the coast of Tuscany. But the brand Sansicaia and the sales didn't really take off until long later and that's why Tignanello is still often quoted as the first. Another wine that is also one of the greatest Super Tuscans in this prestigious area of Bulgaria on the coast is called Ornelaia. Those two are the most prestigious Super Tuscan names, Ornelaia and Sassicaia. On top of ultra premium blends, Ornelaia in particular makes this legendary wine that is called Masetto. That's one of the finest 100% Merlot on the planet, at least outside of Pomerol in Bordeaux, and I think um, now it's around being the most expensive Italian wine. Hmm. Now perhaps the third or fourth most famous Super Tuscan name is Solaya, which is the icon wine also made by famous producer Antinori, just like Tignanello. It actually comes from the same property. The property itself is called Tignanello, in fact. But Solaya is the wine where all the best vineyards go, a Super Tignanello if you wish. As Solaya sells around $400 a bottle, that's a blend of 75% Cabernet Sauvignon, with 20% Sangiovese and 5% Cabernet Franc. What's interesting about these two is that they are made in the Chianti area. Yes, that's where the Tignanello property is in Chianti, but they make them with Bordeaux grapes. Another producer in Chianti called Fontodi makes an iconic Super Tuscan. The wine is named Flaccianello della Pieve at around $200 a bottle. Let's mention a small but prestigious producer also in Chianti area that's called Montevertine. They make an iconic wine called Le Pergole Torte. What's interesting here is that this producer originally dropped the Chianti appellation not to use Bordeaux grapes like some of the others as we've talked about, but because at the time in the 1980s you had to use some white grapes in Chianti regulations as well and he didn't want to do that. So he had to become a bit of a super Tuscan himself and not anymore a Chianti producer even though it's in the Chianti region and made from Sangiovese. That's another side of the term super Tuscan. It also meant visionary, pioneering, a bit rebel uh, and leading producer. That's what Super Tuscan means as well. Super Tuscan is a bit for the wines, but also the producers. Funnily enough, Chianti regulations banned that use of white grapes in 2006, so quite a long time later, but Montevertine is not bringing back the name Chianti on the label. The brand now, their brand, Montevertine, is way stronger than Chianti. Another fascinating story is the one of a producer called Isole e Olena. The owner, Paolo Di Marchi, in the 1980s wanted to make a 100% Sangiovese wine from his vineyards in the Chianti area to express the full potential of the grape. But what I haven't said so far is that to make Chianti wine, you also mandated to use a little bit of other local grapes that are called Canaiolo Colorino for example, blended with the Sangiovese and that's mandated to make the Chianti blend. He didn't want to do that, so he dropped the name Chianti to become one of those rebel Super Tuscans chasing top quality wines. To finish, as really there are too many names and stories to fit them all here in one single video, let's still mention another few iconic names in the world of Super Tuscans that you may want to dig deeper into yourself later on. Iconic wines such as Tuarita Redigafi, Le Macchioles Mesorio, Lusce by Lusce della Vita, Biserno by Lodovico Antinori, Castello di Ama, La Parita, and many, many more fantastic, illustrious names. And that's probably enough names for one video. I'll leave it here for today. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned to follow our next episodes touring the wines from Italy. Next time we'll look into the Chiantis, the Brunellos, the Vino Nobile, 
We're staying in Tuscany, but we'll move past Tuscany very, very soon. You can catch up on previous videos on wines from Italy if you want to learn more about your Vini. And I'll see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Arrivederci. Ciao, ciao.